Good afternoon. Um, I have been uh, given a, a difficult job when uh, Dr. Ananda asked me to come and speak in this conference. He told me that I will have to speak at 2.30 after lunch, the first session after lunch. So I know that it is the most difficult time because <clears throat> after a nice lunch like what we had today, you are most probably going to be sleeping. So it's a very challenging time that I have to talk to you. But then I realized after coming here, I have a double challenge because not only is it after lunch, but it was also after the presentation of Dr. Manoj Naik, who was so comfortably, as you rightly said, sir, talking upside down. <laughs> I have not uh, yet mastered that skill. So it's now doubly challenging for me. Sir, maybe we should take some private classes on how to talk in an inverted position. But I also want to say a oh, small comment uh, to what uh, Dr. Gangadhar was saying this morning. He said he could not change the thing from yoga day, 21st June 2015. He could not change for this conference. Actually, it's a very good sign because in Sanskrit language, the word for a day is varam. We have in uh, Guruvar, Somavar, Mangalvar, etc. But in Tamil, varam means week. So because we are still speaking Tamil in this state, we can consider this as yoga day, as yoga week. It's just somehow how we want to interpret. Having said that, I would like to try and present to you all a topic which is called the heart of yoga therapy where I'll try to explain to you what is yoga therapy because so many people have talked about benefits of yoga therapy and what, what, how yoga therapy can be used and things like that. But my goal and objective today is to present to you what is basically the essence of yoga therapy. So having uh, said that, uh, what I would like to do is, before we begin, I would like to basically uh, start off with a small chant, dive into the topic of yoga as a therapeutic tool that is telling us how to live well. Like in the morning somebody said, we don't want to only deal with disease, we want to be well. Yoga is that science which tells us how to live well. And yoga's actually original purpose was to focus on the development of an individual in different dimensions, in healing and in spiritual dimension as well. I don't know uh, if some of you know Sanskrit or Tamil words as well. In Sanskrit and Tamil we say vyadhi for disease. The word vyadhi comes from Sanskrit. The word vyadhi literally means v plus adhi, disconnection from the self. That is vyadhi. So what is then health? Health must be connection to oneself. That is what yoga says, samadhi. Samadhi means an intense connection to the self. So basically when we say in yoga we are trying to achieve samadhi, it is not that somebody is closing the eyes in a cave or in a mountain and trying to float in the sky. It actually means let us try to achieve good health. That is what is the meaning of yoga. And yoga was not alone, it was functioning along with systems like Ayurveda for many years. The diagnostic system of yoga and Ayurveda are very, very similar. There are some very similar approaches in solutions as well. Slight differences are also there, but there is a very, very common ground between yoga and Ayurveda. Yoga is not only about physical exercises. Our wonderful Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who initiated this yoga day, the National Yoga Day, when he talked to the public, he made one statement. He said, if yoga was only about doing physical exercises in a very good way, then even circus wala will be a yogi. But that's not true. Circus man is not a yogi. So yoga involves something more than just physical exercises. So this is something... And what is the role of yoga as a therapy? See, in those days, yoga was not only for well-being. Sometimes there is obstacles to well-being. See, for you, he's removing the disease for you. But in a yoga therapy situation, you have 
to empower yourself. Somebody else cannot empower you. I cannot stand on my head so that you feel better. You cannot stand on your head so that your brother feels better, your sister feels better. They have to empower themselves. Without empowerment, it is not possible. That is why self-empowerment is the first concept of yoga. And then, in yoga, the practices are individually developed, tailored to each person. This is the yoga philosophy because no two persons are the same. You look around at your neighbors. Do you look like your neighbor? Maybe you don't want to. Do you wear the same kind of clothes? No, you don't. Do you have the same height, same weight? No, you don't. Do you have the same interest? No, you don't. So why should the same thing work for everybody? This is the biggest problem of convincing modern science because modern science wants a standardized approach. But unfortunately, it cannot work because each one of us are different. That is the greatest difference of philosophy, the philosophical difference between modern science and yoga, that is the concept of standardization is not possible in yoga therapy. Each one has to be given a unique solution. And that is the one of the most principal differences, I would say, between modern science and yoga. Excuse me, I think I pressed the wrong buttons in the wrong time. The experience of disease is also different. Simple example. Is this room warm or cold? Some people will feel cold, some people will feel warm. Every experience is a subjective experience. The same is the experience of a disease. One person who is suffering from back pain will experience it differently than another person suffering from back pain. Nobody else can know the suffering of another. Each one's suffering is a subjective experience. So yoga focuses on that. Yoga is an empowering process. Yoga is multidimensional. Yoga's philosophy is that no disease is only influencing one dimension of the body. When you have back pain, you don't only have back pain, you have bad mood. You also have bad mood. You fight with your people, neighbors, you become negative minded. Then you start hating your gods because you are asking God why he is giving us so much pain. So we get multi-dimensional aspects of the human body is influenced when we have disease. Therefore, the tools are also the same. The tools are also the same. Yoga is context sensitive. We all don't behave the same way everywhere. When it's summer, we are one way. When it's winter, we are another way. When we are with family, we behave one way. When we are without family, we are behaving in another way. So every context, our experience is different. When you have to go through some suffering alone, when you have no in the family, you are a single person and you have to go through some very difficult disease like cancer. It's very diff different than when you are having a family support. Your uncle, auntie, brother, sister, child, husband, everybody is supporting you. That healing is much more lighter. So the experience of the disease is different. That is what is context sensitive and yoga respects that. And yoga is not a prescription or an instant solution. Okay, headache, take aspirin. Back pain, take aspirin. Emotional problems, take aspirin. It's not this way, like we have a prescription. In America, actually, it's even better. Emotional problem, go to Oprah Winfrey. It will solve all your problems. No? There is a story. Many years ago, when I was a young student of yoga, younger student of yoga, I was uh, learning under the guidance of my father. And one couple came to visit my father. They were married for many years, but they could unfortunately not yet have a child, and they were very much of wanting to have a child. And uh, the, the doctor uh, of this uh, couple, the family doctor, knew my father and sent them to my father. 
and uh, the doctor had said that the, the lady's uh, <clears throat> womb was very weak and this could not yet hold the child. That's why they had these problems. So my father said, okay, let us, I will teach you some practice. So he taught her a practice and he said, well, you have to do this every day in your house. This is going to be the practice. So he taught her the class, the first class. At the end of the first class, when she was about to leave, the lady puts the hand in the belly and said, Sir, am I pregnant? <laughs> Yoga is not going to work so quickly. It's going to take some time. Plus, it needs other interventions as well for it to achieve. So, a commitment to sustain the practice is needed. Yoga is not a quick solution. That is the problem. You see, sometimes that's where medicine has an advantage. You have a headache, you put a pill. In 20 minutes, your headache goes. So, we are, yoga is competing against that. It cannot compete. It has to, we have to sustain the practice. And that is the responsibility of the care seeker, not the care provider. <clears throat> honest feedback. This works, this doesn't work. It's not going to help if there is no honest feedback. Clear boundaries must be established and followed. This is very difficult in India because we don't know what is a boundary. We only know boundary between India and Pakistan, but no other boundary we know. <laughs> Cricket boundary, but no other boundary we know. There are certain boundaries we have to establish because sometimes some diseases come because we don't have boundaries. That is the problem. Mother-in-law does not know where to draw the boundary between her relationship with the son and her relationship with the daughter-in-law. There are so many problems we have in this culture. That is what we have to do as well. The role of the care provider, the teacher, yoga therapist, is that we have to empower the student, empower the care seeker. You cannot mother the student. We have a great capacity because we all tend to take care of the person. When you say take care, we want to carry them. We want to save them. You cannot save anybody, especially in yoga, they can only save themselves. You know, <clears throat> good doctors are spending about eight minutes per patient. So it's very lucky. Whereas in yoga, we are spending quite a bit of time because we have to understand a holistic dimension. Once we have done that, then we teach them yoga therapy class. We teach them some tools and techniques. They will learn with the class. They will go home. They will practice that for a few days. Come back for a review. We will observe how they are doing. We will observe the effect of that. And then we will review the next therapy class, etc. So the steps of review, supervision and all this will continue until the process is taking shape and through entire period we are documenting all these through so let me know i'll be happy to do that thank you thank you sir